Hello everybody. I'd just like to uh, just have a little address everybody moment because quite frankly, depression, mental health, it's so high on everybody's bucket list at the moment. Uh, I think more than anybody on the face of this earth at times, I think that me, I think I have a reason to be depressed because of my society, I fucking hate it. Yeah, look at this, my CRB, my felonious, fake, shit, toilet paper, I was seen RB. Uh, oh, oh no, Andrew. what does it say on it? It just, it pisses me off. 2016. Conditional discharge for 12 months. Imagine I got 12 months suspended, sort of, that, that, what is it called? Oh, you have a, um, a whole year hanging over your head, basically, and if you do anything wrong, you could get up to six months. Now, this is for a basic drunken disorderly, remember? A provoked one at that. Lone woman, might, yes, I am a woman, minding my own business, just walking up the road, doing nothing. After a unity march in the metropolitan borough, the police decided to start harassing me, provoking, goading, threatening me from behind. That's not really done behaviour when you're applying for a security licence, which I I own and have owned for 10 years. Basically, you're taught to calm down drunk people and you're taught to be nice to them, but these, the, the filth, basically, they decide to provoke and harass instead and goad and threaten you with your own liberty, just making your own way down the road. Anyway, I responded to the criminal, criminal behaviour behind me, Normally I would use IC free and more restrictive terms, but because you're drunk, and that's what it comes down to, drunk disorderly, is you use words that are less suitable, like black and other things. So it comes down to, on this thing, 2019, it still reads, racially religious aggravated harassment, alarm and distress I was causing them, in words and writing. Police, the police. Well, they're not the police. Because basically what it comes down to, I think on that Unity March day, where I wasn't really involved other than just dancing to jungle music and filming, they decided to throw the whole book of Unity at me. And I think when, when we talk about that, we're talking about social media Unity. Because like, when I first started art, or applying myself to artistry, it was because I said, well, inequality tool is a piece of weaponry, industrial shutdown stuff. It's not Greta, green issues, and doing things en masse with students and marching to shut down traffic, but it is. I'm just me with no credit, no pat on the back, no nothing, just authority abuse coming at me then. Probably like harass, because I don't believe in war or uniforms or weaponry or the little boys' toys or the art of war or religions. And I used to say on my social media that no religion would actually believe in any inequality tool in a hand to threaten another human being, whether it's Buddha or Jesus or any of the actual main caste that actually lead the religions. So you're all just null and void in your constitutions, which are all self-serving institutes pretty much. So I feel like I was targeted maybe by social media and they actually knew who I was to actually apply such a felonious, bogus piece of crap to a piece of paper when it was a drunk and disorderly at best. Now when I went to court, they put me in a cell for 24 hours, 24 hours, um, but an hour and a half of that was spent in a cage with a heavy bag and coat hanging off of my wrists which cut into them and the doctor did document that. And I apparently I swore quite a lot, I, t I described their behaviour as something that was fetish perversion with a non-consenting party and I just wanted to go home and didn't understand why I was in a cell because at the end of it all in that place but basically when you've got three goons staring at you with pads just looking at you and letting you in, in, in pain it's going to push you to that breaking point there's a song by Katy Perry that says I let them push me to that breaking point 2016. <laughs> anyway, those, whatever you want to call them, on your tax money, that basically liar, devious bastards of no use to me. I work in security, which I started to see as more of a 
maybe that's why they're challenged by me within an artistic context because I've just happened to have a badge but at the end of the day an artist is an artist we do jobs we don't really commit to them once we've had a hiatus at the O2 anything else is just lesser stuff it's not really worthy so we don't really want to work in environments where people are more offensive and don't have five star customer service so it's not really me but I've played the field and seen the field and seen a lot of the field and um, all I can say is that that made me very upset because it just destroyed my faith in government, policing, justice. Because in court it got reduced to might have offended a member of the public. Which I said I could live with that guilty because I shouldn't have sworn. No matter the amount of alcohol in my system. Which was class A tested because they thought I might have been on other substances. Which proves that the law is an arse because you tested me for other substances indicating just how drunk you perceived me to be in my vocal liberty about how disgusting I find you. Anyway, talking about authorities, we all have different opinions of them. When we grow up in little bubble-wrapped homes, we are sort of dead to the world in a way. We just see it through a screen. And then we go into the world and then they actually make us dead, dead to the world because we can't relate to the people that just sit in front of the TV and don't actually see their conduct or misconduct or injustice and felonious behaviour within a legal sense. Anyway, I'm going to talk to you just for 10 minutes. We're going to try and cut it down after that. That was my second running with the police ever. The other one was just, they thought I was on a mobile phone while I was driving. And that was also quite disturbing because basically I pulled over in a bus stop, they were rude. They said the system was down and they said they were going to check me. I was in a bad place. They didn't use the sirens, they just the blue light flash at first. And when I said that I just live there, could you follow me across the road if the system's down and blah blah and I'm in the bus stop. I pulled out into traffic and said, yes, follow me, pulled out in traffic. They put the blue lights on. And then it was like, get out of the car, and went insane, basically. They acted disproportionately, given all my body language. And out of the car, a woman flipped me into a position that really locked my elbow, and it fucking instantly hurt. So I flipped out of him and said, whoa, what are you doing? And he fell on me, and my head landed next to the pavement, and there was blood. And my knee was cut. And so when I was taken to a cell for 12 hours, when people... I know for lesser things have spent less than 12 hours again in a cell. They said what she in for assaulting an officer, assaulting an officer and um, refusing to stop, which got thrown out of court because I stopped and complied both times. But the point is when you've been lied about, they took my blood on that occasion. So the, my relationship with the police obviously started off badly and that second instance I felt I was targeted because of artistic reasons at a unity march in the capital. Anyway, after that, these are big gaps in between. 2016, the first one, 2011, or something like that. Five years, five years. And then, again, last year. It's like they target you every so often, and let's just... whatever. Well, I can't blame that, but... Uh, Last year, getting to the best till last. Um, lessons in how to break a human soul, spirit, snap it, breaking points. We have our good days, we have bad days. The legal drug that is alcohol is clearly something that the nonces that our police use to target people and I just like to educate people on this fact because I've met many a person that has been grossly mistreated by the system just for having a hen do and being provoked in much the same way I suppose and lost out on going to the Olympics I heard a story like that and I just thought what filthy fucking swine pigs and it makes me very sad these instances of what happened to people and I just, I'm bringing all this up because I just got that in the post. And I go past my place where I live and there's a school and they've always got the stop, think fucking signs outside. Always got the stop, think So I mean, how many times do they have to go in there and talk to your children that don't know any different? Good, bad, good, bad. Creating the conflicts in your left, right hemispheres creating that imbalance that bipolarity of we're the good guys you're the underlings 
the grooming that they come into your primary schools to do. Every, how often is that fucking sign there? How often are they in that school? All I know is the first time you have anything happen to you in life, like a tiny dink in a car, they're coming into your house and reading you rights at the age of 18. Like, oh, it's fresh meat, but I remember that kid from primary school. Because they've had their little eyes and nonsiness all over your little children growing up. And then they come into your adult life. And then it's the first instant. Anyway, going back to the first instance, I have complained to the IPPC because I said why was I repeatedly assaulted in cuffs? Because once I'd flipped out of it and was in cuffs and they called for the van to take me and I'm going, why, whatever, I was only telling you to follow me, there's a cup of tea and you could have had a fucking cup of tea while your system's down, why are you doing this kind of shit? And I'm going, sort of like quite... You know, they see you as entertainment because you're going, you've never been in a stressful situation, so you're talking fast. And this woman, she's using this draconium. Sure, this must be an age-old technique that they use. She's just doing that and doing that and doing it again to a damaged arm. And my injury was this big. My arm was about that big. Bloody nose, cut me, elbow like that. Just for thinking I was on a mobile phone. Now, IPPC, come back with a great response of you were right to be arrested I said that wasn't the question was it why did she assault me repeatedly in cuffs was the question but there was nothing to the IPC because it's the police independent complaints commission so when I got that response I said well the people's police and I pretended to put up a fake email address and put a p in front of it people's police independent complaint commission and an a at the end are doing a TED talk on this kind of indifference, tax paying abuse, fetish like depravity, sadistic natures within a uniform, enabled, facilitated by the public. Anybody that's been arrested knows what I'm talking about. It's so soul destroying on that level. The first one I could live with, we get over it. The second one I could live with, get over it. But last year, apparently, I was worthy of being arrested at Venice. Coming back from Venice, Stansted Airport, for duty of care letters to a person that I met at a festival. In hindsight, she was probably a plant honey trap working with them. The one time I dropped her off in her area resulted in my van being taken away because police were coming through traffic. And I had to signal manoeuvre and this, what seemed like a prop Toyota, decided to just touch me. Controlled collision... Anyway, in that state, she took the details, trusting her, obviously, because there was a, what I thought was an affinity. She took the details and then proceeded to instantly ghost me, so I couldn't report that control collision. Because how do you report something that's a control collision and not an accident? The con artists on the street working with police. The police part of it or not, I don't know. But the point is, it resulted in that. And then there was county court threats for £3,000 for a... Toyota with no damage that's worth I got if to put that into perspective my van I got 400 pound for theirs is the same reg with multiple claims waiting on a damaged bodywork of a used Toyota so it was like cons getting at me and I thought okay is this their way of trying to get me to go to court this is my way of trying to be coerced into some sort of authority abuse us here and then with her my letters dwindled to about once every month or so because she put this duty of care or whatever in my head of anxiety and mental health system stuff. So I was writing to her and I delivered the odd occasional note during COVID because I thought she had extreme anxiety and issues. There was nothing asking in those letters. There was no harassment in those letters. There was no threat in those letters. So to lock me in a cell coming back from Venice last year for 12 hours saying to protect a vulnerable adult or a child to hand is in a bow sheet is another example of the conniving depraved hatred that I have developed for the particular people in my life on a wage and to be honest with you I felt like the, the film world because I've been a supporting artist on film sets for 10 years I feel like that was a crossover like they'd rented over the Bexley film sets even the time at the uni, uni I felt like that was is this for real 24 hours for drunk and disorderly 12 hours my elderly parents waiting outside an airport for me justifiable well what they hand you this piece of paper saying these are your rights you have to know why you're in a cell why am I in the cell for then 
to protect another vulnerable adult, it says here, or child. Oh, right, really? DC Holland, supposedly this person. Gross misconduct. A warning would have been adequate. Escalation procedures would have been appropriate. As so someone that is an authority that worked at the O2 that was a supervisor of that many people, what is fucking wrong with the police force? What is wrong that there are people that are enabled, facilitated, maybe it's LGBT hate, maybe that is what it is, because she's 27 and it's a bit of a taboo, but if it's good enough for Leonardo DiCaprio who dates women half his age, who cares? But it's not like that, is it? It's because she's a woman, she's this, she's that, she's that, she's working within esoteric arts communities, probably just to have another divot out of you because there are the few people in the life oh let's persecute this one we won't let this one go anywhere we'll just use this one as an example it's like sadism it's sadistic it's depraved and it's the worst kind of fetishism going i don't want to be no victim oh oh, the, oh every cliche ever wrote in the songs oh with a hero with the strength to carry on why why what's the point when you just become so disgusted at society for enabling and facilitating depravity, for turning blind eyes to depravity. I ain't being no victim. I'm not going to be held as, oh, because she talks in this way. Oh, someone said, oh, it's like the second Jesus Christ coming. No, 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 no. Everybody just didn't have a backbone to say what is what. They just go along with it. Everybody just complacent. When you stand up against it, they hate you because you're a strong female or an intelligent female. And I'm well aware, it's like Nicki, every song that is ever written, like Nicki Minaj, like I hear the criticism loud and clear, because the motherfucking time is here, because I ain't got no motherfucking time to fear. And why are you doing it? Oh, I'm doing it because I'm a Christian child. Yeah, I'm doing it for those reasons. I'm saying those things because I know they're the things that are supposed to be said. I'm saying those things almost because I've been brainwashed into them. And part of me goes that this life is just one stupid freak show illusion and test of will i wake up in the morning when that plays on my mind i don't think rain was supposed to be forecast today but it was on my mind today and I woke up, I thought, oh, one of those days is it and it pissed down with rain and i was like can i control the weather somehow it's like it rained it snowed on my birthday and so i said i think god loves you i said yeah Maybe he does, but I actually, I'm a conspiracy theorist and I believe in CERN weather machines and this thing being some sort of harnessed entity already, the earth as we know it. Think esoteric stuff like pyramids and culture like that and CERN machines controlling weather is not beyond your capability of ideal in. I go, well, let's believe, feed into this person's delusion so they think, oh, that person does feel like they're in tune with the universe and whatever the god the universe is one and it can fill your soul and it'll rain on that day because your your soul is in the gutter because of other people and it might snow on your birthday because you wrote a song that was based in love that you felt for someone that was just out to harm you that person was out to report you to the police for sending her letters of duty of care rather than an email and the reason the only demand I made of her was, please let me know you're getting your letters, because I felt like the Royal Mail was already compromised. Like, this YouTube has totally got the ability to be compromised. That this is just an esoteric tool of governmental rule and society. Everything that we ever do on this pathetic screen is just, what is it, compromised. It's, it's... <sighs> Useless. It's basically controllable. It's like a prison within a prison. When you look at Will Smith's kids, wake up. It's like he, he, they talk about it. It's like at school, you hear that bell, they're just training you up into that, grooming you into that mentality of that conflicting thing, make you feel like you're bad. They'll push you, provoke you to the edge, push you past the breaking points till you do flip in certain situations where you're being harassed. And if there's extenuating circumstances for why I even reacted like that. Firstly, that was enough. But it was the fact that oh, you can't even make this stuff up. But around music venues of which they are in each other's pockets with certain individual non-players that happen to come into the club. The first time you've ever played a guitar or stood up or tried to be someone, you happen to be physically assaulted. And you happen to be barred from another venue in the SE8 district just before, prior to that 2016 incident. So I only had to just been physically assaulted. And I've been barred because of a clique of people that were actually social media bullying me, 
bunch of loot, whatever. You can't make it up how depraved the universe got at that point. To be harassed by somebody that's supposed to protect me was just a flipping point with my vocals. I couldn't control my mouth. But did that warrant 24 hours in the cell? Whereas other people just get that and let out the drunk tank in the morning? Did that warrant that still being on my CRV? How, how many years later now? Five years later. Five years later you're still going to pretend that I have anything against religion or race. I like hip hop more than anything for it's pointing out the fact that we shouldn't be slaves. Even though white people are so stupid, they've been slaves in Victorian workhouses. They've been split off from their families from Wales to Liverpool to London. They used to be split off from their families, worked to the bone and they were slaves. And then black people come over saying, we slaves, and we go, oh yes, all oh, black people, we've got to adjust our aim. No, the working class were always on par with you. And as far as it comes to uniforms, if they have it in for you, they're depraved little perverts. It's no different to a stalker or somebody that's harassing you as a civilian. They're just doing it in a uniform, enabled. Using social media now, is it? Oh, we don't like what this person's saying, so we can have one upmanship, can't we? Oh, we can look for ways to actually get that. I don't like going anywhere near my own flat or property because the person downstairs, like, which clearly was a compromised entity that is now gone, but that person, that thing, these people around, I don't even trust anybody anymore. It's great, isn't it? You can't go to a festival and just meet someone. I think you actually fell in love to think that, to think that, just to be reported to the police for sending her duty of care letters. And so let us, let's ask you these depraved little questions in a cell for 12 hours. So what was it, a whirlwind romance at a festival? If you can call it that. What, uh, what, what phone did you have before this phone? They're just a bunch of creepy nonces getting exclusive interviews, renting out Bexley cells. Like, who are they? And the people go, oh, you have to be with your inner god because you're just meeting another version of you. These deranged hippies that say we're all one big family. Do you what? No, my mum and dad my family. They're the ones that raised me and they're sitting outside in the car waiting for me to come back from my holidays. And you are having blue light encounters like plain clothes people. Plain clothes. Have you ever been arrested by a plain clothes person and blue lights? What? For what? Sending a letter? Have you ever had that happen? Oh, because then you just don't trust the streets out there themselves. You see those little blue lights go past you go, would anyone blink an eye if felonious people, because there are felonious people out there, having worked as a town centre warden where they were turning their uniforms ever increasingly to look like police and where you can go on Amazon and buy uniforms that look like police and then you go down to McDonald's in your van and you're sitting there and people run up to your window and they go, oi, 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 banging on your window, looking like police but not actual police. It's like the world's gone flip fucking mad out there, especially where I'm concerned. I'm like, what's this? What is this? People. It's intimidating. These people, I was out playing a guitar, there's someone standing next to me with a fucking notepad looking like a fake copper. It's like, literally, it feels like the whole system's just faded away. It's the bullshit. And the fucking high buildings are telling you how to get around without a passport. At first I was like, well, that's dangerous because people haven't got IDs. But you know what? With a government like the one that showed itself to be, in my case, you'd be a fucking hell of a lot better. You shouldn't be sending your kids back to school in this environment. Not the way they've been treating kids out on the streets, stop and searches and stuff like that. Not the way the things, the whole things just become mad. But it's still better than what it was because people were in this illusion of freedom. They were in an illusion of it. It's like I was in an illusion of freedom because I was plodding along in my job. Sign on, get a job. When you fall out of that bracket and you're self-employed and then you start seeing things and then you start to see establishments for what they are as conniving little corrupted entities and around and the police force working alongside them. The police know everything that is corruption down to Interpol. People that go abroad from England and it's funny how they all get spiked in places like Cambodia or wherever far or flung that is. Is it people from Cambodia? All those places? Or is it actually the people that know that those people were going that have had their eyes on your kids since they were going into their school and know what they like in a person once they're grown and fresh meat? What is it?
is it really? How did they even know I was in fucking Venice for a little sh mini break? My mum said they turned up on my door and I said, well I know that I haven't done anything wrong so why am I even not going to worry about this? Going to Venice. Oh they said that you just says you should go to your police station and inquire what you've done. Why should I? I haven't done anything. I am sovereignty over myself. I know that those bogus letters coming through about that van is nothing. I know that I haven't done anything wrong. And so, so what was that? If they had every single letter and every single text that I ever sent to a certain person that supposedly reported me, but I couldn't ask her if it was her, can I? Because, no, I'm too scared to. I'm in a place of literally cut off -ness. Literally living, what, in a prison within a prison already? And still feeling like speaking out is a way to be threatened. But the likes of Snoop Dogg and these people in higher positions that have been through the mill of the police and had their clashes and got there anyway, where are they when you need them? Or is it because I wanted to so set up a social worker franchisee that would directly help individuals like myself and throw the right solicitor at that person and then take those people down the road that they need to be taken down? At the end of the day, because at the end of the day, what, what is it? A preppy little, oh, I've got someone in the cell. Pop you back in the cell. They normalise the fact that they're dealing in the worst kind of fetishism. There is no consensual in me to be there for what? It says you have to understand why my first human right, and you're handing me that piece of paper, and you can't even tell me why I'm in there. Where's the threat in any of this evidence? So it's like things like that, oh, they'll get you every time. Being trapped is a sexual perversion. We've seen Mr. Grey, we've seen bondage, we've seen safe words, get out of it because you trust that person. If you don't trust that person that's dealing with you and you don't consent, it's the depravity of depravity. It's a perversion in a uniform, enabled, facilitated, dressed up as law, but it's just an LGBT hate crime because she's 27. There's a 14 year old gauge gap. That's what it is. There was no sexual content in the letters. It was like, we got together. If you felt that was wrong, whatever, it's not cool. But we had everything in common. Writing, music, playing together. It was an instant hit together. So I mistakenly thought you could trust that individual with an artistic circle, but now I realize that film world, art and everything does cross over and maybe I shouldn't be so scared because it felt like it was all fake but it doesn't stop you having panic attacks because you're locked in in an environment you don't want to be in in the first place. Whether it's a felonious police cell in Bexley and the solicitor who's playing gaming noises in the back that seem to go off every time you give an answer that she likes and it doesn't seem to fit. And because it's over a Skype and your duty solicitor is on Skype. So like this. This is stuff like that you probably won't get out. I'll put it on my Facebook. And this that will be the last thing that I put on Facebook. Because Facebook is just a machine learning piece of kit now. If you read Feed magazine or Industrial magazine. It just tells you that it picks up things or they're encoded videos. I can just trap people with sense of humour in whatever you post it. Ha ah, ha, he's got a rectum. Oh, we'll ban you for seven days. Oh, put it in the comment box just to test the machine learning. We'll block you for 14 days. So nobody's actually reporting it as offensive out of any of your friends. Nobody is reporting it. Not one single friend is reporting it because you're testing this. And I've tested it. It's like, I'll put the same video there again then. 30 days, not one person had the time to do it, and not, there was no comments on the post, it was just an instant done on a, even if it's a post 10 days down your wall, nobody's actually commented on it, and there's no one following it, put it there, bam, instantly, because the video's encoded. So you're looking at machine learning, boring sterility, they're not your friends, not one person on Facebook is your friend, because they don't care, I could talk about this stuff all day, I've got 4,000 friends, I'm sure one of you knows a good solicitor or a lawyer that could help me, but it's all just no wins, no claims, 10 grand isn't enough for what they've done in damage to my life and my family, just leave it on that note, thanks for listening, and I would really like some justice on this, and I totally have sympathy up and down the land for the abuse that people have suffered at the hands of the law. Free man on the land movement, common laws are the way forward. Census, don't do your census, 
nobody do your census because they're not worth it. Okay? Thanks for listening.